Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode, we are going to be taking a look at Table Battles, second edition, designed by Tom Russell from Hollenspiel Games, and we're going to be looking at particularly a battle from expansion number three, which is Gettysburg. Now, the expansion number three, the Gettysburg, is battle, battles that are pieces or parts of the battle, I should say, that were all fought on the second day. Uh, smaller engagements, like what I have in front of you here is a little round top. There's also one for the wheat field and the peach orchard, Culp's Hill, and then, of course, there's a big, grandiose one. So, as you can see, of course, we've got our two sides lined up here. We've got on this side... Oh, I wish I was in a land of cotton, old times there, a long forgotten. Look at me, look away, look away, Dixieland. We got forever units from Alabama, y'all, in Texas. That's on the one side. On the other side, of course, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. We, of course, have the Union. Uh, all those major Union units that were highlighted in this particular part of the battlefield. Of course, the very well-known 20th Maine from the Gettysburg movie, but the old 83rd Pennsylvania, 44th New York, 16 Michigan, etc. Okay? Table Battles is a game that plays pretty fast and furious. The object of the game is to get rid of all your opponent's morale cubes. Now, each scenario has a card that goes with it that tells you who the two sides are, which cards to use, and also tells you morale. As you can see here, the Union only gets one morale cube. So if one unit gets routed, if one unit breaks the line, thanks for playing, stick a fork in you. The Confederates, of course, you can see get two cubes, so it's a little harder to beat them. Whoever, of course, has all the morale cubes eliminated is usually the one to win. There's other ways to win, too. Uh, I won't get into that at this point in time, but um, if you're interested, of course, you can easily look at the rulebook online. And it is a pretty quick and easy rulebook to read. It's only four pages long. Uh, it reminds me of some other games I've played, because this is basically a dice assignment game, like, say, Nation's Dice or Marvel Dice Masters, where the game really comes in with the individual cards, figuring out where to place your dice, and, of course, what each card can do. Okay? Speaking of which, let's take a quick peek here. And I'll use the 20th Main since, again, they're usually very popular because of the Gettysburg movie. Bayonets! So, you have a couple things going on here. You have the name of the unit. You also have the color. Uh, all battles are divided into each side having two wings. They're for the Union, there'll be a dark blue and a light blue. For the Rebels, you can see there in the background, there's a red and a pink. This number up here tells you the strength of the unit. So there are four sticks, kind of like if you look down here at the 83rd Pennsylvania, there are four sticks there. When the last stick is gone, that unit is eliminated and routes from the field of battle. Okay. At the top there, there's two places, two numbers, sometimes more, that talk about the dice. Now the dice is the numbers that you can place. So if you roll five or six, you can place them. Parentheses means you can only place one per turn on that particular card. Now, if there were no parentheses, which don't exist in this game, then you could place, like, multiple fives if you wanted to. Then again, like I said, the game's very simple. You see here, attack gives you the targets. 15th Alabama is the first one. If the 15th Alabama gets routed, you can go after the 47th Alabama. And it tells you what happens. One hit per die, one self per action, which basically means that if I have three dice, I'll get three hits on the 15th Alabama, but I also take one hit myself. And it also says see sharpshooters, which are down there in the game we'll look at in a little bit. There's also counterattacks, the reaction phases of each turn. And again, direction there if you have a pair, 15th Alabama, one hit. Additionally, the unit suffers one less hit. Okay. Uh, reactions are important because reactions take up your turn. So if you use a reaction option, which you'll see here very quickly here uh, at the beginning of this game, if you do a reaction, it basically takes up your next turn. Okay, you, you won't be able to issue orders to anybody for that particular turn. Okay, all right, so let's just kind of dive in 
see how the game goes. Uh, this is one of those games that, um, spoiler alert, uh, that I've labeled 3F Fast, Fun, and Furious because uh, that's what it is. If you're looking for a detailed tactical simulation, this is not going to be for you. However, if you're not a huge tactical set-piece battle person like myself, but you're looking for a game that plays pretty quick and you can have a lot of fun with, that is definitely what we have here. All right, so basically each turn is broken into two parts. You have orders and action you can take once the dice are on cards, and then you roll your dice up to a maximum of six. Now, at the beginning of the game here, there's nothing. So we're going to roll the dice, and we're going to assign them to cards as we roll here. So I've got three there. I've got a four, three, and a one. And my other three, I got a one, two, and a five. Now, when you assign dice to a card, you may assign a die or dice to units on each wing. So for example, all the dark blue units here are one wing and the light blue are another. You cannot order issue dice to two units in the same color. So for example, I can't put a die on the 83rd Pennsylvania and the 20th Maine. I can put them on Weed's Brigade and the 44th New York because they are two different colors. Okay, So, as I said before, if there's parentheses, you can only issue one die to that card per turn. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a couple of things just to show you how the game works. Over here with Weed's Brigade, they're important for this battle because they can absorb losses. I'll talk about the absorb action here in just a little bit. But it says any dice, but it also says if I have a pair, I does a little something different. I can absorb hits um, at a lesser rate. So I'm going to put these two ones on there. And I'm going to go ahead and put this die, since I'm originally a Pennsylvania boy, I'm going to put that die on there. Okay, And the rest of the dice are not used. Now, again, the Rebels don't have any dice on their cards, so we got to get them on there for this opening time. So I got two fives and a four for the Rebs. And the other three dice. I got a four, three, and a one. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a 1 on the 4th TXS. And then I'm going to put a 5 on the 47th Alabama. Okay, and that's it. One on each wing. And we're done. Okay? All right. Now, now on this turn, the Union, I could attack if I wanted to. Okay? And I might just to show you how things work here. It's very simple. When you do an action, when you do an attack, which is typically what you're going to be doing here whenever it's your turn, then you can go ahead and you take any dice that are on the card off, they get used, and then you just follow direction. So I'll go ahead and do the 83rd Pennsylvania here. So we'll pull this off. It says one hit per die. So I hit the Alabama unit once, but I also get one self per action. So that means I'm going to lose one of my strength points, so to speak, as well. So you kind of have to be careful with that. Because when you're inflicting damage on yourself as well, you may find your unit routing before you can get rid of the opposing unit against you. Okay? So that was my action. So I still have these two dice over here that are on this card. So I'm going to go ahead and roll four dice. Because again, you roll up to six. What's in your pool? I have four in my pool right now. And I got, let's see, a six of four. And a two, and the other one hopped out of the dice tire, so bear with me a second here. And a six. Okay. Let's see. Well, I could do a couple of things here. I could assign these doubles to these sharpshooters, and that would help the 20th main. Or I could go ahead and assign to one of the other dark blue ones and ignore the other stuff. I think what I'm going to do is... So I don't tie up too much dice. I'm going to put one on the 20th main and hope I get a pair later on. Okay? All right. Now, again, just to show you how the game functions and works, I'm going to go ahead and launch an attack with the 4th TXS. All right. Now, I'm going to attack one hit per die, and the target is the 16th Michigan, which is right across from here, which there's no diagrams or anything to show you how to set the battle up, but all you got to do is read the cards and see, like, which units can attack which, and then you just spread the cards out um, for the battles. Uh, and of course, 
this being a dice rolling and a signing game, since you don't know what's going to happen from turn to turn with the dice, it is very solo friendly. So I'll go ahead and attack with the fourth Texas. Now they will lose one of their sticks because it does say one self per action. Now, some reactions are voluntary, okay? Like here, Weed's Brigade, let me just show you. Weed's Brigade says at the top there, absorb and it's voluntary, so I can do it or not. That is one of the reaction options that are there. Notice it's a different color, a darker color than the attack label, okay? So I could go ahead and use this if I wanted to. That's my choice. However, some reactions are not voluntary like this one. This says screen. Now, this unit is a special unit for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it's a unit that cannot be damaged in the game. It does not have any sticks assigned to it. Notice the Roman numerals up here. It is a special unit. It always starts with a cube, and every time you roll a straight three, which a straight three is just what it sounds like, like if you roll one, two, or three, a four, five, or six, a two, three, or four, you get the idea, then you can assign the dice to that card. It's a little different when you assign the dice to the card. They don't sit on the card. You give them one of the blocks. Special units always start with one block on their card, okay? But screen is a mandatory thing. So since the 4th Texas attacked the 16th Michigan, I'm going to remove this cube because it is mandatory that I screen. So I was able to screen the 16th Michigan, protect them from damage, but since it was a reaction, then on my next turn as the Union, I'm not going to be able to take any actions at all, okay? Except rolling my dice. So, let's see what the Rebs come up with here for their next turn. Let's see, we got a 1, 3, and a 5, and, and, got another 3 and a 5. Okay. Alright, well I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one 5 up here on the 47th Alabama to kind of put some more emphasis there. And I'll go ahead and put this one on the 5th Texas. So I can try to slam into that part of the line without, of course, wearing down the 4th Texas. Because again, once your sticks are all gone, thanks for playing. Here's some nice parting gifts for you. Alright, the Union has three dice assigned. And again, I cannot take an action because we did the screening action. So I have three dice in my pull, and that's what I roll. Okay, I got a 4, 3, and a 1. Uh, it did not work out the way I wanted it to. Ooh, I didn't even get a straight, so I can't even put it for the artillery. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's let's try and uh, let's put this three on the 44th New York. We'll do that. All right, back to the rebels. Now the rebels could go ahead and attack if they want. I could go ahead and hit with these guys on the 83rd Pennsylvania, but weed is over here. <laughs> weed. <laughs> You would have burned one. Um, sorry. We, 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 it's what it says Weeds Brigade. I'm not making this up. Weeds Brigade is over here. And normally he could absorb hits. It's voluntary. So like if there was a hit on the 44th New York, I would take one stick off them. But since he has a pair, then I can also lessen that. So for example, if the hits were actually going to be three on the 44th New York, with Weed having a pair, he could go ahead and those three would only turn into one. He would only use one, lose one stick and the 44th New York would not lose a thing. Okay. Now as the rebels, I might want them to use that up and I might want to attack with the 5th Texas. So that way, the 47th Alabama, when they strike, they'll have more devastating effect because they won't be able to absorb the hits here or have to absorb it on a one-to-one -one basis. So, now I don't have to do anything. That's one thing I haven't mentioned yet. You can sit still. I could just roll my other three dice that are still in my pool, and who knows, maybe get some more fives, maybe get a couple of threes, then really kind of force the union to kind of sit up and pay attention. Um, you know, let's do that. Let's do that, just to show how it works again. So, I won't do anything. I just roll the three dice that are in my pool. I got a two, three, and a four. Okay, well, actually, you know what? That worked out well. I'll put one of the threes on Texas, and I'll put a four up here on the 47th Alabama, y'all. Okay, so Union, whoo, looking a little hairy here. Now, I could attack 
with the 20th Maine or with the 44th New York, but I would absorb one hit and only get one hit because I only have one die on each. But I do have four dice out here, so I would only get to roll two. So I have to ask myself, do I feel lucky? What do you get? Punk! I do. Let's see what happens. So I won't do an action, and okay, that worked out all right. So I can either double down on the 20th Main, or I'll be able to double down on the 44th New York. Um, well, since the 5th Texas is about to hit us, I think we might double down on the 44th New York, y'all. Alright, back over to the Rebs. Alright, let's launch this attack here with the 5th Texas to try and get him to use these up here. Um, so that way this bigger attack can have an even larger impact on the 83rd Pennsylvania. So of course, since we're going to attack and we got two dice, it's a nice big attack. We should, as we charge up little round top here with the fifth Texas, we should have that rebel yell. So here we come. Okay, so it would inflict two hits. They also take one hit. So they're going to lose one stick. Now I got a decision to make. Should I protect or not? If I don't protect, the 44th New York is about to lose half its strength. But I've got dice on them. So you know what? I'm going to spend my pair from Weed's Brigade and absorb, but only absorb two hits turning into one. Now, of course, the downside is I will have no action next turn for the Yonkies. All right. Let's see what the Rebs come up with this one. Ooh, a one, a two, and a five. Yikes. Okay. Um, well, clearly, because I'm going to try and slam. If I can slam here with Alabama... It's going to be the end of the world for the Union. And um, I'll put it on this Texas here because once the 44th New York strikes, I probably won't want to attack with those guys again because they'll be depleted pretty badly. All right. Now, again, the Union can't do anything except roll dice this turn. So here's see what I can do. Oh, well, well, well. Oh, the Union got a perfect die roll. Look at this. I got a pair of twos and a three. So I'll put that pair back on Weed's Brigade, and I'll put this third one here on the 44th New York so we can try and kick some serious butt next turn. All right, the Rebels. Now, the Rebels, of course, thought they were going to be able to get this here, but with this pair, again, I can absorb the one hit. So I'll have Texas launch their attack, y'all. Again, they'll lose one stick. And again, I have to decide. Now, 16th Michigan is still at full strength, so you know what? We can afford to lose one stick from the 16th Michigan, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a bit of a shot here. Eh, that's not bad. Don't manage. All right. So, so far, so good. I'm kind of saving that because now that the 47th Alabama is loaded up, i got to kind of have to save that. And, of course, I may have to pull the trigger with the Alabama. Again, you know, there's a lot of things here. It's, it's very simple rules, but there's a lot going on. And there's, you know, a lot. I mean, granted, there's a lot of luck, too, with the dice, but there's a lot happening here. Phew. All right, so I got a four and a six. Hmm. So that's too bad I got that sixth. If I had had... Something else I could have been trying to wear down. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I mean, I could do that and load up, but then it's only going to be one hit instead of wiping out the Pennsylvania unit completely. Well, let's go ahead and have the 16th Alabama. We'll see if we can get the Union to do something here. Speaking of the Union doing something, I'm going to go ahead and strike with the 44th New York, okay? So I've got three dice, which is going to equal three hits on the 5th Texas. One, two, three. Oh, they're depleted. They're down to almost nothing now, that unit. And I will take one self-hit, which, of course, cannot be helped. But again, that's only one out of the four. And now I get to roll three dice again. Four, five, and a two. No straight. Hmm. Ah, but I can put the 5 here on the 20th main to give them some bite. But then that's... Well, I could do Michigan. You know what? Let me see if I can get some dice on the Michigan card. We'll go that way. All right. So the Rebels now, they could press with Alabama. 
they could, or 15th Alabama, they could just bite the bullet with 47th Alabama, free up their dice, get that one hit on weed, and take one on themselves. But free up all those dice. Ah, it's too bad that they keep rolling those pairs. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that just to try and free up the dice. Ah, it was a gamble that didn't work out. So there's one there. Weed will absorb. So those four hits will turn into one. Oh, that's kind of brutal. That's the nature of the beast. But remember, in order to win as the rebels, you only have to break one unit. That's it. Okay. And again, now the Union won't be able to take a turn next turn because they used a reaction. They used the absorb option. All right. So the Rebs now get five dice to roll because they have five in their pool. There's only one out of the card. So four, two, and one. Okay. And a six and a four. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's load up the 15th Alabama. So I can do a pink one here. Let's reload up the 4th Texas because they have more sticks. Alright, again, the Union cannot do anything because they did the absorption. Oh, man. I'm on fire as the Union. Look at that. I rolled a pair again. And I can load up the 20th Main. Or, ooh, I could do that. I could ignore weed, take a gamble, Take a change, take a change. Um, oh, that'd be really risky. Because I could put the 5 on the 20th main, put the 3 on the sharpshooters, and then next turn, I could use them together, but they do have to screen, which is not voluntary. If the rebels attack, which they probably would. You know what? Let's load up the 20th main some more. And I'll put these guys on weeds. All right. So. I could attack with 15th Alabama. But again, Weeds Brigade will be able to absorb that hit. I really don't want to have them lose any sticks unless I'm sure. I don't have to do anything. I could just roll three Rebel dice. Since the Union didn't take an action, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And the Union has all their dice out right now. They're going to have to do something this next turn. So, you know what? Let's do that. Let's just roll the Rebs three dice, and let's see what happens. Let's see what we get. Okay, you got a six and a couple of threes. Okay. Um, that was not a very good roll. No, it was not a very helpful roll. I'll tell you what, let's just put this on here. I'm hesitant to put another six on there because weed is sitting here. All right. Now, I could attack with the 20th main. That would be three hits. They would lose one stick. That would really whittle down the one Alabama unit. And 5th Texas is already whittled down, but i got to get some threes. All right. Fortune favors the brave. Right? That's right. Bennett's! So, the 20th main will inflict three hits on the 15th Alabama. And, of course, one hit on themselves as well. But threes up. Buddha. Threes up. Three dice. Now I need some dice to put on the 44th New York. I need some threes. Because if I can break the 5th Texas, and the 15th Alabama is looking weak. Well, this is interesting. I got a 4, 5, and 6. So I could put one on the 20th Main and get ready to attack again and try to hit the 15th Alabama and knock them out of the game. Or, I could put it, it's a straight, four, five, six, and use my artillery to screen. Let's do that, because then I can go ahead and those dice will still be available because it's a special unit. All right, back to the Reb side. Well, let's see, what's this one over here? This Alabama one can hit the 83rd Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's attack with them, because then they will lose a stick, which is unfortunate. But, since the artillery does say screen, it will force them to use that cube up and take their turn to boot. All right. Okay, the Rebs have a pair of fives and a one. 
And I'm going to put the one here. It's a little risky. And I'm going to put the five here. I'm going to try and see if I can hit the 83rd Pennsylvania at some point. All right. Now, again, the Union absorbed, or screened, rather. Sorry, they screened that time. With okay. All right, well, I'm definitely going to put this on the New Yorkers. 83rd Pennsylvania is a pretty good strength, too. Oh, nope, I can't do that. That's two dark blues. Aha! Can't do that. Okay, you know what? I'll keep it on the New York. Forget the Pennsylvania. We're done. All right, Rebels. Now they're starting to get things spread out here a little bit. They're going to attack 16th Michigan, 4th Texas. So it will cost them one stick. Now, if I don't use weed to absorb the hit, the Michigan's going to be down to one. So I got no choice. I'm going to have to do it. All right. Now that again will be my turn. I won't be able to do anything else. All right. What did the Rebs come up with this time? Interesting. All right, we'll put the two over here on 4th Texas. I'm going to try and break the 20th Main, I think. Or should I put that... Well, I have a 5, too. I have a 6 and a 5. Should I put the 5 on 47th Alabama? Try to break the 83rd Pennsylvania? Now nah, let's try and get Chamberlain and his guys off the field. All right, now I did absorb with weed. So I'm going to have to go ahead and roll my dice. Ooh, interesting. No pair this time. Hmm, that could be deadly. Okay, well then I'm going to have to put one of these on weed for sure. Um, I'll put this one on the 16th Michigan. I'll put this one on weed because it says any, which means I can put any guy on there. But since I don't have the pair... I will have to take whatever hits are dished out by the attacking force on weed. Okay, this is going to really trim down the 15th Alabama, but I'm going to go for it. So they have three dice. They'll lose one stick, so now they're down on their last legs. But if I don't use weed, the 20th main would collapse. So I have no choice. But since weed only has one die... I'm going to lose three sticks off him this time, which takes him down to two. Things are starting to get dangerous. I need some straights, man. I need to screen a little bit. I need some more hits, too. But I have to knock out, remember, Rebels, it's two morale cubes. I have to knock out two Rebel units to make this work. All right, Rebs get to roll. They get to roll four dice this time. So that was a good successful attack by the 15th Alabama. Hmm, two fours, a five, and a six. Not quite what we were hoping for here. Uh, sugar, sugar, sugar. All right, let's put... Let's load up on 47th Alabama. All right, now again, we absorbed. We did a reaction, so we don't get to do inaction. Here we go. Well, good news, bad news. Good news, I rolled a pair. So we will be able to absorb. And I'll put this one on the 20th main. But now all my dice are in play. All right, back to the Rebels. Now, if I attack with the 4th Texas, yeah, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it is going to be a problem. Because Weed's Brigade can absorb, but Weed's Brigade is down to their last legs, too. And it only takes one Union unit to break. Whew. That'll put three, if I attack with the 4th Texas, that'll put three of them there. If I attack with the 47th Alabama, I could do, let's do that. I'll strike with the 47th Alabama. Look for a more opportune moment to do that. Now, they had two. I could take two sticks off the 83rd Pennsylvania, but the 83rd Pennsylvania will be down to their last legs. So I'm going to use Weed's Brigade. Again, with the pair, it only cost me one hit, but now Weed's Brigade is basically almost spent. So life's going to get dicey here. Speaking of which, here come the Rebels, so to speak. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Well...
Hmm. Put it there. Okay. All right. Okay, we need to absorb again. So I can only roll two dice. I got a five and a one. All right. The one is useless at this point. But I can put that on Chamberlain and try to attack with him and see if I can break the 15th Alabama in the process. Because once the 15th Alabama is gone, the only way that the 20th Maine will be attacked again is if the 83rd Pennsylvania folds. Hopefully they won't. All right. Fourth Texas could strike the 16th Michigan. If they do... Mm, that's true. If they do... That will take them down to one stick. And then the Union is basically going to be in a position where they can almost win the game if I do that. Alright, I'll tag with the 4th Alabama. And the 83rd Pennsylvania will have to take the shot. They got no choice. But now it's looking like maybe it's the Union. The Union will be able to pull this victory off. Let's see. Alright, so the Rebels get four dice. It's not over yet. But it's looking a little iffy. Right now. They are getting spent. Ooh. Fourth Texas is loading up big time. And so is the fourth Alabama. Alright. Now, I could attack with the 44th New York. But actually, you know, you know what? I need to attack with the 16th Michigan because that will take those dice off the Texas card. Yeah, okay. So, shoot, that was dumb of me with that. So, the 16th Michigan will lose their one. The 4th Texas will lose both of theirs. So, that'll be one morale cube. So, 4th Texas is routed. They're knocked out of the game. So, that eliminates the morale cube. So, now the Union needs to break one more unit and they can win the game. Hopefully, of course, before they themselves get broken. And actually, I think I can win now as the Union. Uh, let's see. I can put that there. I can put these on the sharpshooters. And I think that's going to guarantee me the win now. Because now, yeah, you know what? Now I can either finish it off with the 44th New York attacking this turn or with the 20th Maine attacking this turn. So... So the Rebels are going to come up a little bit short here. They did press things. Weed's Brigade was able to take a lot of shots. And the artillery was there with some timely barrages. Uh, but we'll finish the game out, of course. So let's see. So 47th Alabama. They'll go ahead and strike the 83rd Pennsylvania. But that's going to basically be it. They're not going to have a chance to hit back. So we'll have Alabama, we'll have the Rebels, rather, roll their three dice, or their six dice all together, sorry. Three at a time. I never roll more than three at a time, that's why I said that. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, this is not going to work out so well in the end. We'll put that one there. And then the Union now, I can, I can win this game either one of two ways. Either with the 44th New York or with the 20th Main. Either way, let's just go ahead and we'll do the 20th Main, which would be three. Plus there's those pair that's on there that will allow them... Um... Oh, you know what? Actually, that pair would not be there. And I can attack this turn because these guys would automatically have to scream. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Hang on. It's not quite over yet. I forgot with the pair there, they have to automatically screen. Okay. So the Rebels still might have a shot here. The Union, of course, had to screen. So now they only get two dice. Okay, well now this should be enough to end it. The Rebels can attack again, but again, they won't be able to, to damage the 83rd Pennsylvania enough because they only got one die on the card. But they'll attack. Again, losing one of their own. 
the image in the Pennsylvania, but no matter what they roll now, it's all going to come down to the Union being able to overwhelm with the 20th main. This would be four hits. They would lose a stick. And of course the 15th Alabama would lose their last stick. And that's that. That's the second unit routed, the second morale cube. Game over. Okay. All right. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the table battles. I know I didn't use the counterattack uh, very often in this particular demonstration you know, that I was doing. Which, again, is another part of the game. But, I mean, I don't want to give everything away with the game either. Uh, I'm just trying to demonstrate kind of what the flow is like. But you can see, at least I think, even from a solo perspective, it's an enjoyable game. So, all right, so there you go. There's the Battle of Little Round Top as conducted using the table battle system. Oops. Oh, stop sliding on me over here again. So again, this is Table Battles from Holland Spiel. Okay. All right, next time, I don't know. Maybe I'll share my Heraclea one with you. Um, I just decided to do this one because my son and I have been playing this one quite a bit. Uh, he's five, and he rolls the dice. <laughs> he likes dice. So um, he rolls the dice and, and gives observations and stuff. Not quite ready to play his own side just yet. Um, he's not a whole, not a big gamer. He likes dice, but he's not a big gamer. He's more of a builder. Uh, so to speak, he's always building something, no matter what it happens to be. Um, so anyway, which is cool. Yeah. Want to feed his interest, want him to be his own person. That's the greatest gift I think any parent can give a kid, is just let them be who they want to be. So long as they're not hurting anybody or doing any damage, they don't have to be what you want them to be or what you're interested in. Not necessary. In my opinion... Be it ever so humble. And I have that opinion because that's what my parents did with me. Neither one of my parents were even remotely interested in military history or, you know, the war games. None of that stuff interested them. Nobody. Nobody that I know of either. No relatives or anything. It's very strange. Uh, my best friend says that people come with a little bit of pre-programming from the Almighty. Yeah, maybe that's the answer. All right, so there you go. There's table battles. The Union once again prevailing by the skin of their teeth once again at Little Round Top. So this is Tim Korchnoy from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time uh, again, maybe with Pierce and his elephants from ancient Italy. As always, thanks for watching.